I'm back, and I have good news. It is haircut day today. It's actually not terrible today. It almost looks like I got a haircut, at least in my mind. Uh, but later on this afternoon, a transformation hopefully will occur. Welcome back. This is Artist Journal. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, your artist reporter. It is October 6, 2022. Thank you for the very nice comments. I got some great comments on YouTube yesterday. And then we are going to look at, well, there's a few things, as ever, and then we're going to look at this beautiful Mimo Cat work. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, very quickly, uh, before we get to those comments, actually, Isolationist is on Super Rare. Congratulations. So just interesting to watch this cross-chain thing go on. I think it's great. I, I like how it's not like some huge competition. The world is too small. Life is too short. I think this is great. This is good for both chains and everything. Uh, also here, a post by Super Rare. Earlier this year, a job posting appeared online at the Museum of Modern Art. MoMA was searching for a Web3 associate. So we have job postings here too on my little public journal. If an institution like MoMA wants to dip its toes in Web3, what does that mean for crypto art? And so you can read the whole thing here. Um, yeah, so that's exactly, we pointed this out maybe 10 or 15 episodes ago, and so this continues, which is why I bring this up. So they are looking for a Web3 person. They're pretty slow, aren't they? They're pretty slow. Uh, now this term crypto art, I've always been mildly troubled by it. You see, I think it was in that Artnet article that we saw it was two words. And now in super rare, they, crypto art people use it as one word, which is just kind of interesting. I mean, I've always kind of shied away from it. And in, just in this respect, and then we'll move on to other more important things. But if I'm introducing myself at a gallery to someone and saying I'm in NFTs, I much prefer saying I'm just into NFT art or something like that. Because crypto art for me, just personally, and everybody has their own feeling about it, but to me, it feels like Dungeons and Dragons or something like no I'm really into Dungeons and Dragons and I it's really awesome believe me it's the best you know it's got a bit of that feeling to me um but whatever I mean and will it stick I I my take is I think it will but for Ethereum art from let's say 2018 to 2021 or something will maybe that will be known as uh crypto art just a theory who knows so you can read the whole thread here it goes into depth. But yeah, I just wonder all these different genres. And I keep saying I'm going to do the genres of digital art, and I will. We heard from RuneTune. Uh, enormous gratitude for the thoughtful discussion. So isn't this wonderful? Thank you, RuneTune. Much to think on and much more to unpack. Indeed. Uh, as I said, this one, yesterday's uh, episode wouldn't have happened without RuneTune. So this is a conversation as some people pointed out. And he also put out a really nice tweet. I assume it's a he. Looking for some texture and perspective on AI and digital art market? Look no further. Another insightful overview, overview of NFT art and the way the current moment threads into art movements of the past. So thank you, RuneTune. This is awesome. This makes me happy. As I said yesterday, this is why, you know, this is what we live for on this program. So thank you. And some really nice comments here from Evan Major. Thank you for this. What a conversation we're all having. Having Blessed to be a part of it. Uh, excellent. This one, Adrian. Thank you from Valentin. And Vito, very interesting episode. Bravo. So people really liked that move into history yesterday. One person messaged me and was like, a little less history, please. Uh, what I said is, you know what? This is a public journal. Uh, I like the history. Um, it could be shorter, though. Like, I am trying to make these episodes shorter. Uh, so we're moving on here in the episode. Hilarious uh, post from Rustic Digital Art this morning. When Pokebilly the movie. <laughs> I had a good laugh. Thank you, Rustic. I, I told him uh, the rate that these episodes are increasing in length. Uh, it's not going to be long. We're going to be publishing movies here daily. Um, and a couple of auctions. Greco, our guy with the horse painting. Let me just make sure I got his name right. Is it Greco? I thought his name was Greco. Maybe on Twitter I saw him. Uh, I think his name is Greco. Um, he's got a horse painting. 
my head is going to burn, and he's got an auction, is what I'm trying to say here. Cool Lacoste, Bic lighter, a few cigarettes. Uh, just a cool work, interesting paintings in the background. 10 hours to go, no bids. So opportunity knocks. And I think, I, and I'll correct that if I got that wrong yesterday, but I thought I saw him on Twitter. Um, and also, uh, Bazaya, Botanic Trip, uh, is also at 42 Tez. So doing pretty good with five hours to go here. And let's just take a quick look at this awesome Mimo Cat. Still available, by the way, for two, te two Tez. Um, these keep on getting better and better. You see the texture here. Again, you see this beautiful floral thing going on here, which totally reminds me, I brought it up, of Botticelli. Uh, you know, not to... I don't want these to sound pretentious, but you know, it really... And Leonardo does the same thing. So just, I mean, it's really nicely done. Let's just zoom in. Yeah, you know, like it's not a huge stretch there, is it? I mean, it is it is and it isn't. Let's put it that way. But I just think, look at the care that has been put into this. Like, it's beautiful. You know, value is being created here. Uh, what else? We had this amazing... Do we get everybody else? Yes. We had this amazing work by Marcelo Pinel on Super Rare. So quick Super Rare work here. Uh, let's see if we can get the volume. Uh, let's see. Yeah. We'll see if it renders. Look at this. I mean, really. Next level. The music is awesome. You know, I used to be a Goa DJ, as I've said before. <laughs> this speaks, they'll, they'll love that. The, the psychedelic trance scene. I used to be huge into that like 15 years ago. They're gonna love this guy. So this guy is going places. There is an auction. Uh, someone made an offer for 0. 0.6. Is that where we are here? So I don't know if the reserve has been met. So, yeah, so anyways, Marcel Pinel, uh, Marcelo Pinel, uh, starting bid 2.69, sound on, auction starts tomorrow. Okay, I uh, work by Dexter that I missed the other day, but just saw it. I guess I wasn't following him. I am now, just a really, really, really nice, uh, just a really nice gif, isn't it? Uh, sunset, uh, people on a car, it just, again, Dexter just has a way of just hitting the right notes there. That went for two fifty each, so raising his prices by fifty cent tez cents, I believe. And uh, yeah, edition of ten, you might be able to put an offer in. Uh, another one who we've been looking at, Lewis Osborne, put out his Moving City Six. If you're lucky enough to own two of the other Moving Cities, you got this one for free. So a nice way of rewarding collectors there, and already. Uh, let's see if any what they've sold for. I mean, really nice. Look at that. He put out a couple of works yesterday. Very nice. Uh, let's just look at the market, if any have sold. None have sold, interestingly. Uh, but you can buy it for 69 so let's see where that goes. Then there is this other piece, this interactive piece, and that's a whole other kind of mini genre of these interactive works. Uh, Mood Decider, the first piece from me and Play NFT's new interactive co collection on object. Accepting the top 29 offers tomorrow. So here it is. So you see how it works. Depending on where you click, you get the happy or the sad face. So just interesting. Again, as I was saying the other day, unapologetically digital, you cannot do this on analog painting, right? So that is fun. Click hold and release to find out your mood for the day. Uh, let's just see what the offers are, just out of curiosity. It's always fun to find to follow Lewis Osborne's market. Wow, Purple Drank putting in a 70 Tezo, 6942 bid. So generally, okay, so there's an addition of 30. Generally what happens with Lewis Osborne's work is in the last five minutes, you get a whole schwack load of offers come in. So already, again, there are 27 offers this thing's going to go probably, he's going to make a lot of money off this. He's probably going to make a thousand Tezos is my guess off this. So, wow, or both of them. 
Uh, moving on, remember this guy with the UFO and who collaborated with Lewis Osborne? Well, there was another work that came out that I also missed on October 3rd uh, that kind of goes really nicely. Again, just this illustration. It's kind of half psychedelic, half just graphic design, touch psychedelic, just a beautiful illustration, kind of reminiscent of Escher, but not really at the same time. Totally its own thing. That was by Paper Crane. So another interesting work from them. Buy for 77. Let's just look at what the mint price was. Accepting offers. 42, 30, 26. So Mint Crane. Is that right? Yeah. So taking the top offers here also. So the lowest was 20. Edition of 15, so 300 Tezos at least, more like probably 400 when it was all said and done. Pretty good for your illustration, 600 bucks. Uh, new work from Rustic Digital Art and Santiago, a collaboration stream of consciousness. So just a nice work. This looks like Santiago in the middle with kind of like the Van Gogh-esque drawing lines and very nice combination. I have to say, and then we got some kind of hidden icons, question marks inside. Go, it's going for 14, still available on primary. Very nice work. More Lacos. Uh, so, I, unfortunately, another person in reference I haven't heard of, uh, Kim Young Gi. I assume I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, seems like a pretty big deal from what I was seeing on Twitter. Unfortunately, he passed away, I think, by surprise, sound like chest pains or something, 1975 to 2022, a very nice work of what looks like Kim, Kim Jong-gi uh, doing work in Morlaco's uh, trademark style. He's really good at that. He can just take anything and trace it in his style and it works. How much was that? 50 cents, 50 Tezo cents. I don't think I've picked that up, so I'm gonna have to buy that as soon as I'm done here. Uh, Cloud Pepe as well by Morlacos. So he continues with the Pepe series. I believe this is on Bitcoin. Interestingly, I believe, I believe another beautiful work by Spuggles Meskinen from his Abnormal series. Let's just, this is the, I believe an elevator. Let's just look. A hurdle, life plant suitcase shopping cart. It looks like some sort of elevator though. Um, let's see if this plays. So it looks like the suitcase is blocking the elevator door. It's brilliant. Again, this poetry of the abandoned shop and shopping mall, I am all over. I am all over. We mentioned J.G. Ballard here. He is all over that. Empty swimming pools, that sort of thing. The poetry of the abandoned shopping mall. Very cool work. This was also interesting. We're kind of racing through things here today. Uh, okay, so this is by Sky Goodman. Look at this intro. Uh. Pretty cool music. So I'll let you check out the whole thing. Pretty cool. Nice, nice, nice collaboration. Music by Joey Meeland. Uh, again, using, I think, many tools, which is what I like about what Sky Goodman does, is he exports from tool to tool, which I think is a great method, creating using, created using VR, Blender, video feedback textures, and Resolume. You know, software is some of them I haven't even heard of, like Resolume. So interesting, a very interesting uh, collaboration with uh, Francoise Gamma. Look at this. Because uh, we've seen often this walking guy that is this trademark sort of thing with the lines and now with pixelation. Very nice. Uh, I missed this on primary. I think it only went for one Tezos. Now it's 10. So you got to figure out if you want to pay. Oh no, it's all 10 Tezos. Sorry. History, 10 Tezos. I was looking at the quantity. So they're 10 Tezos, but I mean, it's a very, very nice work. What is the edition number? Um, I don't see it here. 
Uh, I don't want to count all that. It looks like about two, four, six. It looks like 12 or 15, something like that. It's probably a better way to find that out. Uh, continuing on, a calming river. So a new work by our Indonesian artist, Michael Alexander, a.k.a. M-E-K.txt, mech.txt. He makes really beautiful uh, pixel art. I love his nature work in particular. So he's got a new one. I don't believe this is for sale yet. Uh, and when you buy this one, uh, then you get this as a token of appreciation for all primary collectors. So you get two for one here. Uh, so very, I just love his nature work. So a new one over there. This guy is interesting. I'm not sure what his name is. He did a tribute to Coolio. So another tribute here, a pixelated portrait of Coolio and 3D animated loop. So I'm just gonna show you this, if it loads up here. Let's try this. Cause there are older works that I'm gonna go to that I really, really like that are done with kind of a Game Boy. Uh, so I'll show you some of his older work. I bought these older ones. Yeah, like old dirty bastard. Uh, you know, I love these works. So there was this one and there was another one. And again, I just saw these side by side. I just think a really nice take on the modern portrait, you know, and you get, you get the profile. It's almost like a mug shot to a certain degree. I guess here it's only three quarters profile. Um, but still it's almost weirdly scientific in the way that you kind of get a sense for their profile and just what they look like. So very, very nice portraits here. I don't know the name of this artist, unfortunately, but pretty cool. If you put Pixel Coolio into the search, you will find him. Some more works by Haiti that I missed uh, because I don't think we get notified anymore. Total Gangsta. So nice piece here. I guess you have to follow him on Twitter. Uh, so just a simple glitch ROM work, pretty cool. And this was also interesting, rad disc, GIF image edition of 13, kind of classic, although slightly different for him at the same time. I think we might have some more flashing images. Careful with this one. If you're sensitive, we'll turn it off right away here by native ed. So kind of more kind of optical art type stuff. Uh, new work by Elby, just kind of video textures which are very interesting. They're quite beautiful, atmospheric. I mean, would go great on the wall of a party, wouldn't it? Uh, a very meta work by Minta. My portrait of my portrait of my portrait. I was trying to figure this out. So my portrait of my portrait, my portrait. So she's doing a portrait of her portrait that I guess someone else did her portrait and she's doing a portrait of that portrait. So my port, which is her portrait. Okay, I think we figured it out. Still available for a Tezos 50. Always fun on Minta's side. I thought this was just a great work. I saw this on Twitter. Uh, so simple, uh, but powerful. This keyboard here, massive, massive keyboard, retro computer. Uh, who is this by? Lola Dupre, uh, artist and illustrator, Time, Nike, Penguin, New York Times. Okay, so they have a pretty nice resume there. Um, so very nice work. I didn't see it on object though, interestingly. Uh, just some AI works. This was interesting because we've been talking a lot about Max Ernst and Danielle King has been continued her AI mashup series of different artists. Now she's added another interesting thing. Not only is she doing Max Ernst, which is a very interesting artist to use for this series, but she's compared it with a writer which is super interesting. And this brings up this uh, Twitter space. So kind of an interesting work. Uh, and I was in this, or listening to this Twitter spaces yesterday. Maybe I'll bring that up first. Of this AIAD, I think it's an art show. I'm not totally clued in, but there's some kind of big art exhibition that uh, if you put the hashtag AIAD, I think you'll find it. Um, uh, AI art show and I was listening to their Twitter spaces and it was very interesting um, because these people that are very deep into the you know AI art thing it's it's very interesting to hear what they're saying which is almost like they're having a conversation with a machine 
and how they're putting in like hundreds of prompts into the uh, you know into the AI tool, whichever it is, you know, Mid Journey or what's the other ones? Uh, I was looking it up here. I actually just signed up to it. Uh, St- Stable Diffusion or something, and then of course Dali. So that was interesting to hear because you heard of how much work was being put into it. Back to this idea, okay, well, it's not just pushing a button. There was a lot of refining going on. So anyways, and another guy made a very important point too, I think, which he was saying, and I can't remember his name, unfortunately. He was saying how, you know, this is just gonna become a part of our tools and to not use AI as a tool right now is like the equivalent of kind of ignoring digital when Photoshop came out, or sorry, ignoring Photoshop. You know, it's like that equivalent. It's just kind of resisting the new technology. And that point resonated a lot. Um, So it kind of reminded me of like, don't take forever to learn this technology. You know, get your, use your free credits at Dali, try these different things, go to Mid Journey on Discord, et cetera, et cetera. There are many YouTube videos about it. Uh, Actually, I, I missed talking about this. So this is by Weird Nikita. Just an interesting. Again, I guess you can get this on object as well. Let's quickly look at the market on this thing. Addition of 10 offers for 20, one accepted. So yeah, so a very strong, healthy market, AI art. Uh, Continuing on, what is this called? Decay decay of replete revelation. Uh, I love this one. And this one was also particularly educational and illustrative because I wondered, Generated by AI Dali 2. Is this the prompt? Like if I put this prompt into Dali, is am I gonna get like uh, something similar? You know, this comma by Carvaggio, an angry mob of Ronald McDonald's pro- protesting for bad working conditions at McDonald's. So, I mean, a pretty nice result. And look at this other one. Is this, this looks like a different one, right? I mean, so it's very like, I mean, we have to give credit to this, like we we can't ignore this. As that guy was saying, it's like ignoring Photoshop in the 90s, you know, like, uh, so another AI, that's why we give so much attention to AI here. We're trying to figure it out, all of us together. And I think we made some good progress yesterday. Another very quick point. Remember the comparison that RuneTune was doing with abstract expressionism? I think another thing we learned yesterday is Surrealism is maybe the the art movement that really goes well with AI if we're going to start to look for predecessors because it's so similar. It seems again like an extension of a of surrealism. Like it's like a surrealist tool, one could argue. So again, I think we've seen this artist before Charles AI.eth uh, with these huge windows which I found, and then you have big paintings inside and the paintings, and you see how the outdoors comes into the indoors and this beautiful light, just kind of grand, as this person says, beautiful, and it really is. Here is another one, natural museum. Okay, so people in a museum looking at nature. It looks like one big window, but you can't tell. Uh, And sky at the top, and you can't tell if it's real sky or if it's painted sky, so just... A very nice, ambiguous piece, I'd argue. Another AI work, Leaks of Time by Javier Tomeo, who we also looked at. Uh, So it looks kind of like an undersea thing going on. Very beautiful, you know, very nice results. And and my almost empty Tezos wallet. So we're going to keep it simple and short today here, folks. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the comments. Until next time, take care.